Thank you, everybody, for coming to the Aaron Torres Podcast YouTube page. I do have one quick favor before we get to the video that you came here for, and that is very simply this. You see that little red subscribe button below this video? Go ahead, smash that subscribe button. It really does help me. It really does help this channel grow and my audience grow. So go ahead and hit that red subscribe button. And now, here is the video that you came here for. All right, everybody. I'm back. Good to be back. Good to be back. Uh, I'll say this. So I think on this page, we do a pretty good job of talking all things college hoops in the offseason, obviously some college football too. But right now, there's a lot going on in college hoops. I don't think anybody does it better than the way that we've been doing it over the last couple weeks. A lot of transfer portal talk, a lot of NBA draft decision talk, a lot of high school reclassification, you know, all the big stories in college basketball, the coaching carousel, all that good stuff. What I can tell you, though, is this. We got a story on Wednesday afternoon, about 1.15 Eastern, that will go down as the single biggest story in college basketball this offseason. There will be no bigger story this offseason than what happened at 1.15 Eastern time on Wednesday. When Oscar Shibwe, the reigning national player of the year, goes on Sports Center and drum roll, please. <laughs> Oscar Shibwe, 17 points, 15 rebounds per game last year. The consensus universal national player of the year announces he is coming back for another season of college basketball to play at the University of Kentucky. I am telling you, not only is this the biggest story of the offseason, this is one of the biggest stories in the bigger picture that we have had in college basketball in some time. And what I would say is this. First of all, just, just think about the fact. Oscar Shibway this past season, he put up numbers that I don't want to say that we've never seen, but what I kind of want to say, like, most of us in our lives have never seen anybody quite like Oscar Shibwe this year at Kentucky. Over the course of the season, 17 and a half points, 15 rebounds per game. But if you watched him, I mean, it was just absolutely unbelievable, right? This is a guy, 20 and 16 versus Central Michigan, 25 and 7 versus uh, Notre Dame, 14 and 28 versus Western Kentucky, 13 and 20 versus Missouri, 29 and 17 versus Georgia, 30 and 13 versus Vanderbilt. These are like video game numbers if you're playing at, you know, whatever the elementary lowest level is. And this is what this guy was doing in the SEC, one of the best conferences in college basketball against some of the best teams in college basketball. And so why this is big is because you just got a player that is completely unlike anyone else that we have ever seen in recent college basketball history coming back for another year. One, it is great for the sport of college basketball, a big, recognizable, name brand player that is coming back to the sport. And on top of that, I mean, you talk about how big this is for Kentucky, right? So like I've been sore, I don't know if I've been any more or less critical than anybody else about Kentucky in this offseason. And things obviously did not end the way that, that anybody wanted against St. Peter's, unless you're a St. Peter's fan or you picked against Kentucky in your, your, your NCAA tournament bracket. I've been sort of critical of John Calipari, and I think most of it was justified. But what I will say is this. Getting Oscar Shibway back officially, and I know this had been trending this way for a while, but it's one thing for something to be trending one way for a while and for it to actually happen, a, a, a news story this big, but for John Calipari to actually get back Oscar Shibwe, one, boy, oh boy, it takes the heat off of John Calipari. And what I'll also say is this, it puts Kentucky right back in the mix there, right? I mean, if you're a Kentucky fan, it's no different than being a fan anywhere else. Kansas, UCLA, UConn, Villanova, wherever. When you play college basketball the way that Kentucky does, all you want is a chance to, have, to, to, to be good enough to have a chance to win it all, to be good enough to realistically be one of those teams, those final five, six, seven teams at the end of the year that are good enough to cut down the nets and win a national championship. Oscar Shibwe's return alone, regardless of what else happens at Kentucky this offseason, it allows Kentucky to do that, and that's why this is so big. It's great for college basketball. We're going to talk about that in the bigger picture in a minute. But in the Kentucky perspective, his return alone – single-handedly allows you to be in that conversation. Because listen, you, you guys know, I mean, you don't need me to tell you, what do you have for 15 rebounds a game, 20 points a game almost, you know, 17, 18 points, whatever. First of all, you just can't replicate. There's no guy in the portal that you can go after that's going to get you 15 boards a game next season. 
And so you think about all the things that he does, all the extra possessions that he creates, the, the, the stress that he creates on other teams' defenses, the uh, you know, inability of other teams to get extra possessions because of his defensive rebounding, it just completely changes everything. Now, I still think Kentucky's got some work to do to fill out this roster, to have it to where Kentucky fans want it, where you feel really, really good going into next season. Um, you know, obviously the point guard situation with Shaden Sharp, we got to figure out what's going on there. As I record here, uh, you know, nothing official in terms of his future. I don't know if Severe Wheeler is the long-term answer, and I'm not rooting against him. I just don't know if he is. Um, I think you need another shooter besides C.J. Frederick. Maybe that is Antonio Reeves, a kid who, who visited over the course of this week. So there are still pieces that need to be figured out. And again, there's a difference between being a team on the fringes of the title conversation and being one of the one or two favorites. But in the worst case scenario, Oscar Sheebway's return means that Kentucky is, they're in the conversation. That's all you can ask for. And Oscar Sheebway alone single-handedly brings that to Kentucky. And now we will see what the rest of the roster looks like over the course of this offseason. Huge news for Kentucky. Huge news with Oscar Sheebway deciding to return. And let me just say this. This is one of the great things about the new world of college sports that we live in. Um, you know, listen, I, what I would say, and we'll have more extended coverage of this over the coming weeks on the Aaron Torres podcast. Make sure that you're subscribed. But what I would say with Oscar Sheebway, this is a great new sign of the new world that we live in. Because whether he said it officially on his uh, announcement or not, and by the way, his announcement was incredible, talking about the relationship he has with his mother, how his mother is a hero, I rely on her for everything. I mean, it was just great, beautiful stuff from Oscar Sheepway, the stuff that we frankly have come to expect from him. But at the same time, this is the great part about NIL, right? And like, like I, I get the frustration about the new world of college sports. We talked about it on on Wednesday's show with Tyrese Hunter, the kid from Iowa State, I get the frustration from some fans at some moments in time with the new world of college sports. But we also can't deny that NIL and the transfer portal has completely transformed the sport of college basketball in a positive way. Talked about it a few weeks ago on the show. The transfer portal alone now creates interest in the sport of college basketball in April, May, June, etc. People all of a sudden, you care. You're following the moves. You're seeing who your school is bringing in, who they like, who they don't like, who are they recruiting, who's committing elsewhere. But on top of that, NIL is a game changer too. And there's a lot of negative out there about NIL and collectives and what does it all mean and all this good stuff. But there are some positives as well. A few weeks ago, we talked about it with Armando Baycott at North Carolina. He doesn't come back almost certainly unless he has NIL, unless he knows he's getting a good chunk of change at North Carolina to be a North Carolina basketball player. And it's the same with Oscar Sheepway. We all know his background. We all know he's from Africa. We all know he didn't grow up under the best circumstances. And if this was even two, three years ago, he would have to go pro regardless of what his draft stock, regardless of if he was going to be a second rounder, undrafted, go overseas, because he's got to make money for his family. Well, now he gets to come back to Kentucky as the face of college basketball going into next season off an All-American season in which he won every National Player of the Year award. I know there's some complications with some of the NIL stuff because he's on a foreign visa. But if he makes the kind of money that we all think he can make, that's great. That's great for him. That's great for his family. That's great for Kentucky. And it's obviously great for college basketball to have a player that recognizable returning to college basketball. And so you just talk about a huge story. And again, we'll have plenty more about this on the Aaron Torres podcast on Friday's episode. I want to get out a quick reaction here on YouTube, though, because you just talk about such a big, game-changing, landscape-changing story here in College Hoops. Oscar Shibway is returning immediately, regardless of what else happens. He is one of the most recognizable player in college basketball. Kentucky is back in the mix, and I just think this is great. This is great for the sport of college basketball to have a guy as recognizable as Oscar Shibway electing to return to College Hoops, and I am so, so, so excited. I mean, again, I just said it, but listen to these stat lines. They don't even sound real. 20 and 16 versus Central Michigan, 16 and 12 versus North Carolina, 14 and 28 versus Western Kentucky, 13 and 20 versus Missouri, 29 and 17 versus uh, Georgia. Can't wait to see Oscar Sheep win a Kentucky uniform. Great day for college basketball. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to go ahead and subscribe to the Aaron Torres Podcast YouTube channel. 
Also, make sure to download the Aaron Torres podcast. New episodes every Monday, Wednesday, Friday.